group, the elite group. And he had two sisters, and uh, one of the sisters died, so her siblings vote as well. So the six of them were made shareholders, and they had a bit of a falling out. Steve Morris, who rose from the ranks of an apprentice. We pass the siblings, parents, and grandparents together. It's a galvanised chassis, which you'll see shortly, with an ash body. Now, when you head on, because you'll be an expert when you finish, look at the gap between the cowl and the headlight here, and it's like that. New Zealand, South Africa, and Cyprus. They don't go to the USA. The reason they don't go to the USA is they don't have some. Believe it or not, these are the same cars, but different. The one's got uh, alloy wheels, this one's got stainless. Most uh, aero super sport width, more carbon fibre in it. If you have a look at it, it's been a little damaged because we've just taken it to Salty Watch up the hill climb and then we, then we took it to Silverstone. So getting it on and off the trailer has damaged it a little bit. Um, it is driven by software packages, but it's still a goer. So um, the other one is in Santa Fonsi. But uh, this is our 2009 FIA car, predated, but we've actually got, we've noticed a big cooling in it. The pressure at the moment on certain parts of the world to bring this car back mm. because it is becoming a cold car. Reason? It has a boot. The Aero 8, mm. uh, the Plus 8 doesn't, so people like the fact it's got a boot. And the 2008 car. <laughs> this car rather let us down up the lot in 2004. Uh, overheating problems, waterproof problems, water pro pump problems, overheating problems meant the car was out of the race for quite a while. Uh, we didn't finish enough laps on the register to get on the Lamont register, but we did finish on the tarmac, so it was there at the end. What we did win as well was the best kept technical garage, why well, I don't know, because we were in it, but uh, we actually won a credit campaign. Oh, great. A bit of a compensation. Oh, but uh, someone has worked out that um, our racing budget for the month in 2004 equaled Audi's catering budget. <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine. I would imagine. So you can imagine how much it wasn't successful as the 2009 car. But what is interesting about the car, we get a lot of stalls around here. It's a lovely little story. See this front end here? We had some 10 year olds here uh, last year. Two boys were talking. We asked them what these were for. Uh, this split up. And they had a bit of a think and they came up with the idea it was for moving snow. This was, this was, this was a snow plan. And there was a girl with them, and this is the truth, she was 10. And she said, You're talking aerodynamics. And she was 10. Right. Yeah. So we've taken a name. <laughs> that bit's a lie, but the, the rest of it is perfectly true. Yeah. It is, of course, a ground hugging device. Oh, plus four plus. But this is the very first car that Peter Morgan designed in the early 60s. 
was aimed at the North American market for a £1,000 plus £200 purchase tax. And it didn't sell. And the reason it didn't sell, three or four reasons. First of all, if you wanted a Morgan in 1960 or whatever, it was not one of these, you bought a Lotus that looked like this. Uh, secondly, it's got a hard top. Some say it's like this because his girlfriend had blue front hair. That's just the girlfriend. But the Morgan people didn't have hard tops, they had soft tops. And the other reason is fiberglass. And we don't like fiberglass cars. So from 1963 to 1967, we sold 26. They're all still about what we thought they were. As you gathered, Morgan has never built engines. For the original three wheelers, they were Peugeot, Jack, Matchless, Danzani, Blackburn and Ford. Uh, for these, they tended to be Coventry Climax, Triumph, plus Kent, Ford, Kent engines, some had Fiat's in later on. But this had a TR2 engine in it, like this one, in the 60s. And we wanted some more power, so we went to the original Rover factory in Solihull uh, to buy their Buick, or use their Buick V8. And their response was to try and buy us as a factory which we refuted. Mm -hmm. Ironically, they got bought then by British Leyland, mm. uh, and we went to British Leyland and we got permission to use the Buick V8, which became the Rover three and a half litre engine, which is the most famous engine. In 105 years, we've built, we think, about 45,000 total cars. Mm. 10,000 of them have been plus eights. Mm -hmm. So it's been a very successful car for us. Mm. From 1967 to 2004, they are still very collectible. These cars for German, Austrian, Dutch, and British owners will pay up to £45,000 for these plus eights. Mm. And when you think our new Rover, sorry, our new Ford engined Roadster is 50k, they're still commanding very good prices. There's an auction on Wednesday at Leinster Brightwells who sold one of these uh, two months ago for £40,000. Mm. Mm. Uh, so they are fetching good money, mm. good, a good investment just the plus eight. This is the Gumball Rally Award, which is a gumball machine. <coughs> it was full of gumballs when we got it, but it's just got a little flap on it, and people keep making our gumballs. But, mm. uh, we sold six of them in eight sellers to have a yellow deck uh, trip to the It's an aluminium chassis made for its red shape under license in Birmingham. Simple reason And uh, tells me the special What I want to show you is this. This is the quality assurance section. So there's a page here for every stage of the car build, and it's filled in by everybody who works on your car. Man. This is your car. This has been Richard and suspension in the factory here, yep. made with the sliding pillars, aluminium inner wings. So this will weigh about 800 kilos, and the guys would have built this from scratch in just under nine hours. And if it's a roadster, 10 hours. So 10, the wheel.
down there. Brilliant. Wouldn't believe it, would you? Yeah. Can I just start a call? So we've taken an ash frame. We'll go see the ash frame that's being built. And once they're built, they go outside and see a second time. And they do it for 15 minutes and then they them. And then they come into the body shop. They turn it upside down. And we put an aluminium skid pan along the bottom. And then it's exposed on the corner. So we turn it over. One, two, three, four panels and two doors. They'll do in nine hours for a two-seater, four-seater, 13 hours. Did you see the aluminium block in the door? In there. The, work, the doors are made out of one millimetre, 153 alloy. Now, if you were T-boned, you would seriously be injured. So what we do, we put a side-in pack rail, which is about like that and about like that, over there, behind the lock. And that gives us the side impact protection. So if anyone hits you T-bone wise, you're covered and you don't lose your knee. Just waiting for your colleagues to come down. Actually, a solid piece of that. Actually, it's into three pieces, but this is quite heavy. It's beautiful. Uh, this is a top rail, so when it's machined, this is where the windscreen goes, and this is where the dashboard goes. So we start life with a solid piece of ash. Uh, we machine it into this section. That's what it comes down to. Right hand drive. And then we offer our customers a choice. They can have clear, mahogany, walnut or ebony. Uh, six pieces in a set, uh, all rubbed down by hand, dry, takes a day. Poly, polyurethane. Poly yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's actually Australian walnut. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. What we decided at Christmas that our supplier was naff and uh, we were getting poor quality, so we decided to bring all this work back in-house. Mm. So this is one of our pilot uh, fascias. You're not allowed to use solid timber, walnut ones, so it gives you an idea of uh, really good. what we can do. Dave did it, and he'll do this in a vacuum bag. Yep. Yep. So I'll show you the vacuum bags mm. later on. Mm. Uh, and to get this shape, it's quite light, we put them on a format, uh, we'll g cut the ends down, and then we put them in a vacuum bag, zip it up, suck the air out, toast it for two hours, comes out like that, that wide, and then we, we rip it into these uh, sections. Yep, and this gives us the spars for the three wheeler. What you're looking at, it takes us about two and a half hours to build it. 
then he goes off site to a people called Premier Engineering. Uh, they actually use blown aluminium panels, which they put onto here, and then he comes back three days in paint, half a day in upholstery, so in four days we've got a three wheel of Goes on the rack, ready to join its chassis. Yeah. Yeah. All individual. Yep, yep. Machine them up. Now, two hours with the polyurethane. Take these. These are about 30% moisture content. Frames about 14, your furniture will be about 8 or so. So they're slightly damaged. We don't wet them, we don't steam them. Blue them off, stick them in here. And after two hours, they come out. I like that. And then we machine them up to go into the frame. So the frame for 18 hours. So we can get these in two hours. And there are six uh, joiners, so we need a 12 hour window. So uh, we can keep up with production, mainly due to the curing content of the bottom. When we go, we'll go to vacuum bags. But it's not the energy on these plants. Okay? And in the veneer is all the silver from the salt water and you made an absolute fortune. Because it was lovely hardwood with this very fine silver like over the years that he made. Trim shop, dry from paint. Uh, so this is leather stage. So you can have Yorkshire, Scottish, or Italian leather. Most people have uh, Scottish leather. Mm -hmm. And then the cars come forward here. So they put petrol caps on, side screens, windscreen, wipers, anything chrome goes on the car. Here. Over there in the rack is the side. And then uh, when they're working, on it, and then the hoods put on. And we'll just walk it out. Marking, uh, marking out the white Taylor's chalk and then the seed system which is going down here will sew it up. And they're going to fit it, they lay it over, pin it on the ply, sew it here, pin it out here. You lift this up because when the hood's finished you can use this for shopping by pulling that down and lift it up and shopping it. So they'll pick this up, glue the back on like that, come forward glue the front, let it set, and then when they just push that down, that gives you the tension. To take the hood off, all you do is put it back there and then roll it back 20 seconds. Mm. Mm. Instead of four minutes yeah. and you get drenched with the yeah. nine pin. This is um, no telling on a la Mazda. Mm. <laughs> End game, this is where we do final completion. So one man in one bay, uh, we'll put the car back together again basically, fetching the panels from the paint shop as you can see. Uh, the guy I've just... are our um, tester drivers. So their job, wire up the dashboard, put the steering wheel on, 25 mils over the road. 25 mils of road testing, come back, up on the lift, Calibrate it, tow it in. Off site, under seal it, back, warranty, quality check, PDI, polish check. So this is the end of the 12 day period for the classic car, and this is the end of the 30 day period for the plus eight speedsters and everyone. Okay? We'll just walk
two, mm -hmm. but uh, you can actually move the seats um, over here. So well, here they are. Which position you want? The beauty of these hand-built cars, as well, with the greatest respect, there was a, a short lady with us earlier. We did one for a lady about four foot nothing last year, and she drove the car. So what we did, we built the seat up for her, and we built the seat up, and a normal seat on the other side for the passenger. I saw her a couple of months later at a rally. She was fine with it. It was driving okay. So you know you can have now. But what we're struggling, struggling with is. The so we'll just tear around the city. It seems wrong. And we don't know it. Bombers in the war. Mm. And if you look up at the top, see the line? And then every so often on that side, you'll see a bracket with a roller. Yes. Those are the original 1939 blackout lines. Okay. Because oh, uh, there was a battery. battery was targeted about six times mm. by mm. German bombers. Mm. Because they knew, obviously, we were building stuff here. Mm. We built ammunition over there. Uh, these two cars are going to the same thing. So this is the wood. Three days of polishing, they're clean here. So in a whole seat, three coats of polish and glaze, and then they get uh, clean here. So in one day, we prep them because the next time is the. Mm. So they'll go to Northampton to a bonded warehouse where they're bubble wrapped and containerized to go to say Australia or they are put on Europe. Right. As I said, a lot of, a lot of your uh, fellow countrymen come here and pick their cars on their holidays mm -hmm. and then drive them back to second hand cars. Mm -hmm. Picked up by the customer or transport mm -hmm. off mm -hmm. to Northampton. Mm -hmm. The three wheelers. They were all shut down onto one pot in mm -hmm. traffic. Yeah. But what we did this year, we put a cooling device on them to stop them doing that. Okay, so, so you've got a, a big fan, fan. Yeah, there's a fan, fan unit. Drawing it through. Yes. Yeah. I normally say to you, welcome to stay here as long as you wish, but you haven't got much time. I'll tell you about one or two of the exhibits, and then you can have a read or go off. This is a 1910, uh, 15 years of restoration here. It's tiller driven, tiller steered, sorry. So you steer it on the tiller. Twin jab, uh, single ammo, bulb horn, petrol tanks up here. This is a 1909 livery. And of course it's got a low and high gear, <coughs> so you've got a lever on the side with a dog tooth and just pull it for top or bottom gear, depending on bottom or top. Yeah. We hope to finish it this year, but we said that last year. But it's worth about 35 pounds. All had a stalk emblem, uh, cobra snake horn uh, along the side here, fresh air intakes, believe it or not, which are turned round. Uh, this is an Anzani engine, and we had them also with a Blackburn, but it's not here at the moment. Some of these, this one, but this is an Anzani. We use this at um, most weekends. Uh, bear in mind it was on a metal clad car, no treatment, no under seal. The current one should last to 60 years. And people back water called Aero Super Sports. 1400 millimeter wide, not 17 as the new one. Charles drives this quite a lot for our PR events. A 6.2, so he just gets in and out of this. Mm. To own these cars, though, nowadays is pretty impossible. You've got to miss as you take to me and build your car. But it'll cost you about 80k, mm. and he'll do one a year. Mm. And I don't know what his waiting list is at the moment. Mm. But uh, nevertheless, it's the, the sort of the only one we ever did. Mm. Uh, the next automatic we did is in that area. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think it's under some time if you like. And it's a flat red, 1953. Mm. It has a 10 brake horsepower Ford engine. Mm -hmm. Luna's probably bigger than that. Mm. Mm. Uh, a friend of mine has got one. Um, we've done our best to replicate the office, except someone said to me, where's the electric fire? Because in 1966 they came and there was an electric fire. I don't want an electric fire, but it, you know. Mm. 
Now their average flying time was nine hours, and their average life was 14 days. Mm -hmm. uh, Harry, being the pacifist, approached the RAF in 1918 and wanted to do something to recognise their contribution. So they allowed us to use the uh, RAF wings on our badge. So this is um, this represents the lives of the flyers who lost their lives on the mm -hmm. Western Front between 1914 and 1918. Mm -hmm. And as the story, when well, the story's not there, but the photographs are there. Mm -hmm. So we always remember that when we do. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. it from. Look bright, don't they? Oh, great, doesn't it look great? They're going to be worth about 70 pounds Australia. Yeah. Which is a lump of money, but they're very unique. Yeah, we're all aboard. Yes, we're all aboard.